So the lectionary passage for this morning is the Sermon on the Plain from Luke versus the Sermon on the Mount uh, from Matthew, which is what we just read. The Beatitudes are, are the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount. And we believe that uh, Matthew and Luke have similar but different oral traditions that included both of, both of these stories. The lectionary uh, passage I'm, I'm, I'm sure I have preached on, but I knew I had preached on the Sermon on the Mount. So that's, so that's where we're headed this morning. We do not know exactly the exact location. We just know that Jesus went to higher ground to speak to the disciples. Uh, Jesus, you know, didn't take a, a, a podium and speak to the masses, a masses. But um, I, I want to take a slight little detour uh, for any Monty Python fans and just in Life of Brian, a little bit of brilliance. Jesus is stand is up on a on a hill and he says, "Blessed are the peacemakers." And anybody, and then I don't remember the name. I don't know all their names, but he goes, "Blessed are the cheesemakers." Why the cheesemakers? What about the bakers and the cobblers and the, you know, anyway, so just in honor of the brilliance, right? It doesn't say that he gave a public speech, but we can infer from scripture that he did speak to a large crowd because at the end of the sermon, we read that people were astonished because he spoke as one with authority. So who was in the crowd? Who was he talking to? Jesus had a reputation for being a healer. And people were bringing their loved ones to him to be to be cured of their uh, for whatever afflicted them. So he's not talking to a group of people who have it all together, who are wildly successful. But he's talking to people who knew their own limitations, people who cried out to God to make it through the day. Imagine bringing your loved ones to Jesus. It has been an effort, no easy task. You are exhausted and hopeful and afraid to hope. And you hear, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And you realize, oh my, he's talking to me. We can hear the Beatitudes as a list of rules, like Moses coming down from Mount Sinai with you know, a list of 10 things, thou shalt and thou shalt not. And our, um, our minds can automatically just, you know, like, do we measure up to this list that we are being given? But Jesus is not giving commands here. He's blessing people. He's being descriptive. descriptive. What if we were to listen to the Beatitudes? What if we were to listen to this list as a love letter to all humanity? I'm gonna invite you to open your Bibles, your pew Bibles or for folks at home to find Matthew five. And we're gonna read the verses together as we go through it. So beginning with verse three, let us say together, blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you. Oh, okay, no, we can stop. We're just gonna do verse at a time. Keep it open. Don't shut your Bible because we're gonna go through a verse at a time. Blessed are you when you have no one else to turn to but God because you experience God's presence and love most profoundly. I led a Matt Talbot retreat years ago. Matt Talbot is the spiritual wing of Alcoholics Anonymous. And I was invited by a member of my congregation. She's, she's a recovering alcoholic who said, Robin, I don't know if you know this, but you, you preach a lot of things that sound you know, right out of AA. And I think you, know, you would do well. So they invited me. And, uh, and it was an incredibly blessed, blessed retreat. And one of the things that struck me and hit me during this retreat are blessed are those who know that they need God to make it through each and every day. 
what wisdom there is in trusting that God will give you enough to make it through this day, every day, one day at a time. Blessed are the people who can praise God from their wheelchairs or in sign language or facing the scariest circumstances of their lives and faith. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And then I'm going to take there's a, a, a card to haunt their horror and like, beep, beep, beep. I'm going to, number three, ho, ho, you know, Trinity, we're going to say that was an affirmation of the Holy Spirit. Let's read together verse four. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are those who believe their lives are, are over only to find that God can make a way out of no way. For those who have lost a job, a loved one, who didn't make the team, who failed the test even though they tried their hardest, for those who, whose dreams for themselves have died, or those who lost everything and who look to God to experience resurrection in their lives. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. We are a resurrection people. Let's read together verse five. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who in this world struggle to find their voice or raise it. For those who are never asked what they want or what they need. For those who are ignored. For those whose voices are ignored despite speaking their truth out loud. For those who have never known equal footing. Whose well-being have always taken a backseat to the wants of the powerful and the aggressive. In the realm of God, there will be justice. You will be heard. You will not be overlooked. You will be valued. You will be included. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Verse six, let's say this together. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed who, who, who know that there's a better way who dream dreams of life in which all are fed and all are free. Blessed are those who sacrifice for those dreams, who fast for it. Blessed are those who hold themselves accountable. Your efforts are not in vain. God will give you what you need to keep on keeping on. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they will be filled. Let's read together verse seven. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are those who are aware of their own sins, who know that they fall short of the glory of God, who find themselves on their knees, lamenting the pain and suffering that they cause, who don't consider themselves holier than thou, but who hold themselves accountable to a higher standard who do not compromise justice, but execute justice tempered with compassion and grace. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Verse eight, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. The heart was considered actually the region of thought, intention and moral disposition in scripture. Blessed are we when we're not thinking, what's in it for me? When we are moved by the greater good, when our sole intention is to please God. This beatitude promises that we will see God. And where else in Matthew does it, does it talk about seeing God in Jesus? Matthew 25. When, Lord, did we see you hungry or thirsty, a stranger or naked or sick or in prison? When you did it for the least of these, you did it for me. When we are serving the less fortunate, we see God. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Verse 9, let us say together. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. 
This is a gift. This one's a gift. They're all gifts, but this one preaches in this day. Blessed are those who don't give their hearts over to hate, who love the person on the other side of the picket line, who pray for the person whose politics make you want to scream and then weep, who, who learn to love despite, who refuse to see anyone as less than a beloved child of God, even if they don't see you as a beloved child of God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. And the last two, we're gonna read them as, as, or as, as bookends. Or let's do it this way. Let's, let's read verses 10 through 12 together. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. So to the community that, that Matthew writes, real persecution came from being a follower of Jesus. There is still persecution for people of faith in this world, not necessarily in our context. We might not get to sit at the, the cool kids table. And I wish I had uh, attributed this quote, but I have read, to think we are persecuted for our goodness is normally delusional. Most persecution stems from others' anxiety, prejudice, and hatred for our status, race, or identities. And in a world where the church is extremely likely to be the ones doing the persecuting, and historically, absolutely, we need to be very cautious of deciding to wear this one as a badge of honor on our sleeves. Blessed are you. So let me tell you a story of when I was driving to that Matt Talbot retreat, I was afraid I, I was having a who am I that I should go to Pharaoh moment. What do I have to say to these people? And just feeling, Lord, help. And that was my prayer in my car, in the car on the way there, Lord, help. And I turned on the radio and I turned to the Christian station 